So you plan on staying here for quite a while? Or? Well, I can only stay for six months and then they boot me out. So I've traveled the world in the alternate six months. And where do you travel when you do? I've been all over the place. It's good to go away and there's nothing like coming back to Salt Spring. This place is a precious oasis. There's nothing like it. It's just as good as it gets. <laughs> So what do I think of Salt Spring present day? Present day and, and it, its transitional mm -hmm. situation. It's an island that I think has constantly been transitioning, though it was always somewhat of a transition island because people came here and had their cottages. So it was a place for people to come and spend summers and to some extent it's still like that. You have people who though have built their homes and now a lot of the baby boomers are moving back. So the population is growing and it's all and it's an affluent aging older population so it's hard for the, the middle class the working class to find jobs and I find most people here have multiple jobs like I do in some ways to be able to afford to live here and I don't know if the next generation is going to be able to afford to live here at all if they unless they live with their parents so it's it's probably going to become more and more of a kind of a tourist slash retirement spot. It's just kind of progressing in that direction unless we can create some industries here that support jobs. We're at a crossroads here. Do we want to continue in the same manner the trust has gone for the last 35 years? No. Is it time for a change? Yeah. We can buy into their vision of an ever expanding budget and responsibilities or we can say enough is enough, it's time to try something different. Something tried and tested throughout the Western world. It's called a municipality. How long have you been on South Spring and where did you come from? I came from Victoria last and I've been here two years. What do you think so far of Salt Spring? More importantly, do you have a roof over your head? At the moment I do. Uh, the rent is really high. Uh, we barely survive at the moment. Mm -hmm. I could hear it's just it's very expensive to live here. Uh, and I find that the good people are pushed out and it's a place for the rich. What brought you here? Um, that it's a place where you could be yourself. I really like it here and I want to stay here because I don't see it being better anywhere else. And I'd like to see some breaks for the people that actually live in the community mm -hmm. and not to be treated like tourists. Mm -hmm. The cost of rent, uh, mm -hmm. they force people out in uh, the summer usually. You know, just stuff that's supposed to be illegal and they do it anyway. So if you have a deadbeat landlord, he's going to stick together with a bunch of other deadbeat landlords and there's not much you can do. People think they're actually getting ahead somewhere by doing this, but uh, really it's doing nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, because the prices and the inflation is making them stay exactly where they are. They're not getting ahead. And what is it that you like about Salt Spring? Hi, and you are? 
Carter. And how long have you lived on Salt Spring? Mm -hmm. And what do you think of it? Good. Good, but a little bit ago we were talking about your move from Vancouver. And when I said, gee, Vancouver is pretty expensive, you said... Not expensive as Salt Spring. Is this the Alice Trust? It's show time! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we have a bridge with no name. That's the way it is here. Better the devil that you know than the one you don't know. It's easier for somebody if you have to live in the woods, because that's the only place you can live in, then it's easier to do that here on Salt Spring than it is anywhere else in North America, it would seem. People do like I'm doing, then there's, and the Gestapo stay out of our noses that's the trust and the CRD, then we'll be able to survive. I've got nine adults living here and they pay $125 a month maximum each. So they can afford to work, you know, three or four days a week if they want and uh, do their painting or music or whatever and live be rather than do.
How long have you lived on Salt Spring? Oh, too long. <laughs> Why do you say too long? I am not a bubble gunner. <laughs> Why, you think there's too many young people on Salt Spring now? No, not at all. It's too many old people. With uh, second degree attitudes of life. So, it, so you're a philosopher too. As well as oh, as well. not necessarily. Yeah. What 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 constitutes a philosopher? Someone who what, a bottle of beer and a cigarette. Who a, a bottle no, a bottle of beer or um, <laughs> or is it a coffee and a cigarette? I don't know. What does constitute? No, That's someone who observes life. Oh, life observes and, life as it progressively it. goes on in towards its own small intricate destruction. Yeah. Yeah. That must be Salt Spring. <laughs> How difficult it is to live here, and how there's more and more homeless people, and then we just don't treat them very, very well. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of big house that just sit empty, and there's people that sleep in the forest. From Kelowna, and you're here on Salt Spring Island, and the church you're affiliated with is Community Gospel Chapel, and the kind of work you're doing is volunteer work Service. all over the island. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, and you're not charging. No. no. into my home in October 1968. I came to Salt Spring in late August 1968 and entered 11th grade. I finished 11th and 12th grade on Salt Spring. I was class of 1970. Even just the leases in Ganges. Ganges is only owned by a few people and the leases down there over 40 years I've seen people businesses set up shop and leave within a few years you have to sell a lot of something to make just the lease, let alone to pay your mortgage and or rent and put food on the table and have a life. So just the businesses get hit hard with the leasing. 
months. It's just expensive to live here. I don't have a mortgage. I don't rent. Um, I don't have high overhead. I live a very simple, inexpensive lifestyle. I don't want a lot of things. I don't need a lot of things. I'm quite comfortable with what I have, my garden. People want things. They're not prepared to come to a place that doesn't have amenities and stay. So they want the amenities to come to them. I'm just one of uh, 10,000 people that I'm able to find employment locally and sustain myself through that employment locally. Um, doesn't matter whether uh, it's an island full of rich people. Rich people need to be serviced. And so there'll always be people like me that are willing to do that. They pay their taxes, property tax, that stays in the community. Whether they want to live in the building or not is... Incidental there too? I would think so. What would you have to say to young people wanting to come here and live here? Good luck. change in a positive direction and prepare us. Right. Oh, well, I can tell by your questions that you've got the will to be forward-looking and positive and, you know, I, I tell people that I and trying to get to do something positive. If you take some particular step, it's not just one, because it's, you're taking one out of the negative column and putting it in the affirmative column, so that's two. So you're doing two things by doing one thing, and that should make you really enthusiastic. Thank you very much, Maggie. Well, I'm honored that you <laughs> paid yeah. attention to what I said. Got me? <laughs> what are you doing? Making a movie? Oh, what a beautiful cat! <laughs> That's so funny! <laughs> and I think from the outset, we felt that um, the social justice component was very, very important, and the community aspect of it was very, very important, and that, that those two things were um, fundamental to this particular festival and and something that we didn't want to lose. And it was, you know, we want to broaden our audience. We want to bring in people that are, um, you know, maybe you've heard about some of these issues, maybe, maybe their hearts are there, but they're not quite ready to 
take the next step. How would you say the audience does differ uh, in comparison to, and I know this might sound extreme, Sundance, very extreme. Mm. Toronto is a, is a festival that cares a great deal. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about VIF, but you've experienced a lot with VIF. And IE Telluride, which although is au courant, mm -hmm. at the same time is very focused mm -hmm. about social justice. Right. Well, those four festivals that you mentioned, mm -hmm. they're all very commercial, right? Um, the Salt Spring Festival, I mean, the, I think that the major difference with our festival, the major difference with the audience is, this audience doesn't have to go out and, you know, put down their MasterCard and, and you know, spend 150 bucks for, you know, passes to the festival. This is a donations-only festival, and this is something that started out in the very beginning and, and that we've kept and that the festival is, is continuing to this day. It's a wonderful example of, of those that have more supporting this wonderful festival where everyone gets to learn something and grow and, and you know hopefully move more towards activism and creating a better world. Salt Spring, Salt Spring is a really interesting place because it's it's a microcosm. It's this little this little community that that is um, kernel of a community. Yeah, it's a little kernel of a community that that just it, it, it holds so much there, and it's just this little finite little place, and it has a lot of everything there, from you know, the paradise that you mentioned to the difficulties. on South Spring. <laughs> Salt Spring Island is a very interesting community. We are supportive, yet we are alienating at times. Uh, this is my, my kind of conclusion after seven years. It is uh, wonderful and yet isolating. Um, the nature is amazing. Our access to fresh food is amazing. What do you think about the theory that this is an island of inertia? I think that's correct. Yeah, definitely. And although we think that we're quite progressive and uh, yeah, I think progressive is the word. You know, we have we still have, we still have a lot a long ways to go. There's a lot of growth. Okay. Uh, okay. 
I was homeless all of last year. I camped out in a tent. I got soaked regularly in the rain because nobody'd rent to me at that time and rent was too much, you know. So what is too much? It was over over eight hundred dollars for a single dwelling, just for a single person dwelling, you know. And uh, now I'm spending four hundred a month and I'm not even making that much. I'm barely getting by, you know. So we have to use the food bank services so that we can get something to eat to last us through a week and survive on whatever we can scrounge up, you know? We had a fire going over there 24 seven last year. A bonfire to keep yeah, warm? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I don't know if we can serve you. We stink of wood smoke. They also tried getting a petition said all the businesses over here to ban the church from beating the homeless in the park. There's a lot of homeless people on the island here and they've all been seeking help to get accommodations and it's just not happening. So when you say homeless, where are they living? In the woods? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere the woods, the parks, shelter, they sleep on the hunting. beach. You know, I just recently got a trailer, an extension cord for electricity and a garden hose for cold water and nothing else. That's 400 a month. In my case, I'm camped out on the porch of the community center with the director's permission to sleep up there. I've got permission to stay on his porch. I don't get bothered uh, as long as I keep it clean. Is there an attraction for people who basically are having a hard time in life to come to Salt Spring? because it would be perhaps easier to live in the woods. Yes, it is. But how do you think your life evolved this way, in this manner, to be where you are standing right now on Salt Spring? Well, because I ran away from my adopted home when I was 10 years old. I don't like authority figures. I'm very independent. Uh, people I'm standing with, crew in the park here, they're my family. Yeah. We all Reason stick together and we take people. care of each other. This is your extended family. Yep.
when the sun goes down again. When the sun goes of civilization. Um, I, I think only in that context can we really 
sort of understand and, and sort of see the larger picture, see us within the larger picture. It is just a, a matter of time until that that likewise we, we start to feel the, the influences of, of this global winding down. I was one of those people myself who eight years ago came to the island with, um, with the family and young children with the with desire to escape the urban chaos and, and raise, raise my children in, a, in what I felt was a community that had, had some deeper values, um, closer connection to nature smaller community, closer connection to people. And and despite the you know, somewhat of a you know, say a battle of ideologies going on on Salt Spring between two different visions, one which would really include them and one which is not that friendly towards them. As a small non-profit community currency organization, there's there's only so much we can do. Uh, we're we're endeavoring to provide the community with an alternative to national dollars and start to make this transition um, towards a, a community-based currency and that that begins with a psychological transition where people start to recognize that money can take various forms not just the form that the government provides. There's going to be uh, innovative ways of, of people housing themselves as a group even if that flouts the the, the laws and bylaws of the of the community um, these are going to be necessary things that people um, are going to, I, I believe they're going to have to do in order to, um, to, to survive and stay on Salt Spring. There's a, there's a shifting of worlds between our, um, the old capitalist um, paradigm of gaining as much as you can, accumulating it, and then cashing out and, and enjoying life in Shangri-La. And certainly there are lots of people um, come to Salt Spring you know, with that, uh, having done that. And then there are the, the others who haven't availed themselves, haven't been able to avail themselves of that, of that system or choose not to, um, who, you know, who can find many other innovative ways to, to live and live in, in a much closer relationship with nature and with, with community and, and, and do so in a way that's much more harmonious uh, with, without having to go back to um, accumulation and, and I should say that my views are my own if they don't represent the, found, the foundation itself you know Salt Spring Dollars uh, you know, stands on its own as as a, a community currency that people can avail themselves of and we're endeavoring to make some some transitions to that model to make it much more community friendly and provide greater benefits to the community money is something that is very uh, um, it's, it's interwoven intrinsically interwoven with, with people's psychology and, and, and very much based on, on trust and that needs to be uh, nurtured gradually over time. I uh, have some of my own perspectives on, on how young families can, can best make a go of it, whether that's availing themselves of alternative economic models, alternative housing models, um, new, new methods of sharing. Um, all of these are going to be necessary. And, and they, they do fly in the face of, of a a well-organized, um, wealthy group of, of people that have a different vision for Salt Spring and would endeavor to, to maintain you know, artificial scarcity here, um, minimize families' abilities to, um, to live um, inexpensively on Salt Spring. And, um, yeah, so I, I call that the, the Martha Vineyard's... Uh, uh, Mentality. Mentality and philosophy. And, you know, I, I think they're all probably very well-intentioned and they're wonderful people. They're part of our community. But that type of philosophy is really not one that's innovative and, and progressive. It's, it's one that's conservative and, and regressive in the sense that it is trying to maintain a, a fiction. Um, a fiction that, uh, you know, a picturesque postcard of Salt Spring as... So, as, as a place where they, they came and fell in love with uh, because of nature, but ultimately it's a, it's a selfish vision that uh, that looks and, and only considers their own enjoyment. Preserve and protect then becomes how to preserve and protect Salt Spring for their enjoyment um, under the rubric of sort of environmental conservation oftentimes, but really it's a vision that excludes people, ex excludes 
the, you know, the diversity of community. I'm no fan of Karl Marx, but he, I think he did get something right when he said the history of all hitherto existing societies, the history of class struggle. And, and we definitely see that on Salt Spring, where you have a, a wealthy class that has already uh, availed themselves of the benefits of capitalism and cashed out and, and now come here and, and have set themselves up um, in their you know, very large homes and living very, very um, comfortably. Comfortably, of course. And, and I don't take that away from anybody, but you know, when that philosophy starts to um, deny others the right to live and, and sustain themselves, uh, then, then I think that's when there's a clash. And I think we're seeing that clash. We've seen that clash in the community with the Salt Spring Coffee. Um, situation which came to loggerheads, but um, certainly there's been many others that haven't got as much publicity. Um, and then, then there's the other ones you never hear about where where families are, are struggling, endeavoring to do things, even sometimes, of course, floating bylaws, many, many people living illegally, renting illegally, doing whatever they can uh, to survive and, and stay on Salt Spring and provide that um, opportunity for their children to live in community and within nature. And so I'd like to ask you one last question. It's a bit of a silly question, but Salt Spring, one word or two? <laughs> <laughs> the ongoing controversy. The ongoing controversy. It doesn't really matter to me. It's, it, it's either, either one's great. It's the essence of Salt Spring that uh, is embodied in both. These are the healing water girls, dancers. seven years of your property not having anything on it and and if that's the case then what exactly is considered organic and it's not say you use compost from something that maybe wasn't organic and that goes onto the property who says you know I'm leaning more towards <laughs> raw food these days so I grow food which I can enjoy raw like the rapini leafy greens Asian greens so what's happening here I mean what's already growing first crop is um, radishes we have the French breakfast here and then some icicles you know they are ready and uh, actually you can have the leaves as well in um, in salads and such. Mm -hmm. Just wipe the dirt off. It's good, good soil. You know, patience is one big ingredient when you grow food. Oh, so-so, eh? 
kinds of good stuff and that's the quality of the eggs well <laughs> I tell you something funny I tell you something funny hey. a neighbor a neighbor who got eggs and uh, uh, she likes to hear the rooster growing uh -huh. and uh, I told her well a rooster it's very important and the eggs are more nutritious if there is a rooster okay and I told her see with the sperm of the rooster in the eggs there is uh, there are uh, certain uh, not vitamins minerals and it's really enriching the eggs you know what? She doesn't get aches anymore. direction of Salt Spring is? Well, <clears throat> when I think about that, I think maybe that's the question we have to ask ourselves as an island. We have many things that, uh, directions we could go and many things we could build upon and our reputation around agriculture and environmental consciousness and um, food and health uh, could be, any of those could be expanded, but what I see happening on this island is instead of working together to build on those things, we are making a full-time job out of going against one another. And uh, it seems like we lack some overarching ideals under which everyone could flourish and for that reason, I feel like the direction of Salt Spring is unclear and maybe something to be concerned about. And what would you say to young people wanting to come to the island and settle here to raise families and make a go of it? I would say it's, uh, I, I raised my son here. It's a fantastic place for children to have an experience of nature and an experience of community and safety, which I don't think are very common in larger city settings. <clears throat> and as we all know, it's expensive, for, uh, especially for young families. 
But if they feel a call to come here and to align themselves with especially one of the areas that are Salt Spring strength, I think it can be a very powerful community. Well said. Now I have one last question. The ongoing debate, Salt Spring, one word or two? <laughs> Don't look at my mail. I spell them both ways. <laughs> It's going to be all about Salt Spring. The people, the places, the... Yeah, the fun stuff. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Salt Spring. Yeah, yeah, Wagwan. Well, Peace, harmony, unity, integrity. Yeah, you know what? This maturity, morality, responsibility, routine. Bless it. You know, come back to Salt Spring again. We say... Mwah. Am I in? No, I'm not. You're in, of course you are. Absolutamente. Hey, I thought that was you. You picture hound, you. Ah! 